Welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be doing a video about molecular structures. Um, and this is especially for people who haven't got a background in chemistry and are kind of interested more a bit what the actual molecules used in perfumery might look like. Um, so in some of my videos, I sometimes flash up an image of a molecule on the screen, um, which is one of the ingredients. Um, and basically the idea of this video is to kind of explain what those diagrams actually mean. Now, these diagrams are called skeletal formulas. So in chemistry, when you have a molecule, you use something called a formula to denote it. And what a formula essentially does is tells you which different atoms are making up the molecule. So all of your atoms, like your carbons, your hydrogens, oxygens, etc., um, you might have a formula which tells you, okay, the molecule's got this, this, and this in it. Now, there are different types of formulas. So you might have a very basic representation, for example, um, C4H10. Um, that would show you that you've got a molecule with four carbons and 10 hydrogens. But what that wouldn't do is it wouldn't show you exactly how they are arranged in the molecule. Now, a skeletal formula is a certain type of formula, which is really good for um, organic compounds. Um, organic compounds are basically compounds with a lot of hydrogens and carbons in, um, and all, almost all perfumery molecules fall under this category. Um, so it's the ideal kind of formula to use. Now, what a skeletal formula does is it effectively is a picture of the molecule. However, instead of like some other formulas where all of the atoms are shown, um, the skeletal formula is a simplified version. It's a kind of a skeleton of a formula. And what it does is everything that's a carbon or a hydrogen isn't actually shown. It's just denoted as such instead. And the reason this helps is because there are so many atoms in the molecules that we're using, um, and so many of them are hydrogens and carbons that it can get really confusing if we draw them all out. So if you look at an example skeletal formula, so I'll put one on the screen here, um, what you can see is you've got all of these lines connecting together. Now, a line, what it means is it's a bond between two atoms. So every time you've got a line, that just means there's a bond there. Um, in the skeletal formula, every time there's a carbon, it's actually removed from the formula. So when two lines join together, what it shows you is that there's actually a carbon at the point where two lines join. Now, in general, the way things usually work in chemistry is every time you have a carbon, it likes to form four bonds. So the way these formulas work is every time you've got a point, which would be your carbon, any line coming off of it is a bond to something else. So that might be another carbon. Now, carbons are also normally bonded to hydrogens as well. Um, so again, this would be quite inconvenient to draw out all of those hydrogens. So in these formulas, every time a carbon has a missing bond where it should have one, what that actually means is that there is a hydrogen there instead. So for example, if you look here at this point, there is a carbon. Um, and you can see that because it's got two lines coming off of it. So it shows there's something being bonded to two other things. And you can't actually see um, what it is itself, which means it must be a carbon. Now, because we know carbons always like to bond to four things or to make four bonds, it's only got two, which means it also must have two hydrogens attached. So if we look at this, what we can actually see at this point is, okay, this is a carbon atom and it's got two bonds, two other carbons, and two bonds, two hydrogens. So if you draw it out fully, it will look like this um, over here. Now, the final thing about the skeletal formulas is, well, of course, not every atom is always a hydrogen or a carbon. Even though they're very common, there are still other things. And the way we denote these would just be like any other chemical formula. Um, so what we would do is we would just put a letter or two letters which represent the name of the element. So for example, um, oxygen would have an O, nitrogen would have an N, and sulfur would have an S. Um, to be honest, there probably aren't many other elements you would ever really come across in a perfumery compound. Um, but any element in theory in these kind of formulas would just be denoted with its letter, which is, you know, the same letter you see on the periodic table. Okay, so just to illustrate this a bit further, I've taken this molecule which is sulfurol, 
Now, as you can see, we have three different elements here which are not uh, carbon or hydrogen. So we've got the nitrogen here, we've got the sulfur here, and then we've got the oxygen here. Now, we've also got a H on the end of the oxygen. Um, and what that means simply is that the hydrogen is bonded to the end of the oxygen. So that's kind of, instead of writing it out fully, which would be the oxygen at the end of one bond and then another bond to the hydrogen. So it's effectively the same thing. Now, okay, after this, we've got one other thing that we haven't come across before, and this is the double bonds, which are here um, and here. So, what these double bonds mean, or double lines, um, they just mean that there's two bonds instead of one. So it means that, for example, here, this, this sulfur and the carbon that's next to it have got two bonds between them. So it's effectively like a really strong bond. Um, and again, here, we've got two carbons next to each other. So carbon one and carbon two, and there's two bonds between them. So they're double bonded. Now, if we wanted to work out what this formula looked like fully, we would have to work out where the hydrogens would go and which, uh, which carbons are in there. So I'll draw that out below. Um, so we can see the, the oxygen and the hydrogen would still say the same. And then coming up here, we've got a carbon. Now that goes up to one more carbon, but if we remain on this carbon down here, we can see that we've only got two bonds going out of it. And as I was saying before, carbon in general likes to have four bonds. So that means we're gonna replace, um, or we're gonna add two hydrogens to the end of it. Now, the next carbon up here is in exactly the same situation. So we're gonna do the same, add two hydrogens. And now we come to another carbon. Now, this one, we've got a bond going to the sulfur and we've got two bonds going up to the next carbon. Um, so, cause we've already got our four bonds, we don't actually need to add any more hydrogens to this one. Now, going up around here, we've got another carbon coming off. Um, this one has only got this one carbon bonded to it, so we know there's gonna be three hydrogens coming off of it. Like this, and then, so that's done. Now, going back to that carbon, we can see that there's one more bond here now to the nitrogen. Now, nitrogen, um, let's not worry about that too much, but just know that Actually, the nitrogen does not have anything else bonded to it. It's just got one bond going to the carbon and one bond going to the other carbon. Um, just um, with nitrogen, that's not always the case. However, you won't come across it too much in perfumery anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it for now. Um, now coming off this carbon here, we've got two more bonds going to that sulfur um, and that completes that part. Um, now we can see that this carbon we've just done um, it's missing a hydrogen because it's only got three bonds, so we're going to add that there. And in doing that, that is the molecule complete. So that would be kind of how you would draw out fully the molecule. Um, so if you actually wanted to imagine the atoms, how they would look in space, it's this is the way they're connected together. Yeah, so that's it. Um, so I know there wasn't any actual perfumery in this video, but the idea of this is just for people who've never come across this kind of thing before. Um, especially when you're dealing with synthetic ingredients, so synthetic molecules. Um, it really, I think, is quite nice to be able to actually see the molecule, see what it looks like. Anyway, so hopefully this helps someone. Um, let me know in the comments if you like these more kind of technical videos or if you prefer just um, actual making perfume, making the formulas. And yeah, um, give this video a like, hit subscribe, and have a great week. Um, I will see you next time.